it's a happy day here with a woolly thistle package. Let's see what we have. We have some Roma Field. This is a nice little color. Yeah, this is color 401. What else? Ooh, I wanted to compare. This is color 77 against color 81, which is more of a heathered black. I like this one. I'm thinking about getting more for a star cardi. This would be the contrast color. Um, and I might also make some gloves that are black and white color work. I've never made gloves and I think it might be fun. Another Rauma color I wanted to check out. That's very pretty. This is 405. Oh, very excited about this. Look at this ribbon. Isn't that gorgeous? I think I have um, two yards for a steak cover. Let's see. Is that it? No, there's something else. Ha! Color 91. Yes. That completes my collecting of Jameson and Smith for the um, Ola Yoke by Ella Gordon. I do believe that is everything. Yes, yes, yes. Yay, I love a mail uh, woolly thistle mail day. Gentlemen, much like the Israelites of yore, the stars how many men languished in the desert for 40 years. Friends, I'm almost done working. I just have a few notes to write, but it's 4.30. I finish seeing clients and I need a break. I think I, think I said that yesterday. So just a quick check-in to say that I finished my socks. They're going to be gifts for Jaime for Christmas. I'll show you in a minute as soon as I get these twisty things out of my hair. And what else did I want to tell you? Oh, I got a Kingfisher video today at the pond. Oh gosh, the hair, the hair is a little nuts. But yes, I got a Kingfisher video. Stay tuned till the end to see it. Um, you can hear the little tick -tick 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 call. And I got two dives on the video. Um, and in the second dive, the Kingfisher got a fish. So I'm very excited to show you that. Um, so let me show you the socks and tell you about tomorrow. All right, this is the first sock. It's been Farm National Pizza Day. Loving these. The second one, I didn't have enough yarn. I used up all of my portion of the yarn and that's because I share it with Sarah Pomegranate. And I don't know what it was about these socks. They're actually, I do know they were from my husband. So they, they used up a little more yarn than I was expecting, but I was able this, this red I took from scraps, um, this black I took from scraps, but it's close enough. Like you can see, like I've got a huge red stripe here, but I think they work great together and he doesn't care if they're not match, matching socks. So lots of ends to weave in on this one and then I will wrap them up for under the tree. Yeah, so a few more squares to put on my blanket this year and I really should cast on something new. I don't know what it will be. It might be the, um, the, a cowl, a, a colorwork cowl and I don't wanna get the name wrong so I'm gonna look it up. Yes, okay, it's by my friend Sarah, Sarah Bauer on Ravelry and it's called Arrows and Doorways. That's it, I wanted to say Pathways. Arrows and path and Doorways and it's a beautiful design that um, would be great for scraps and I might use my Zauber Ball scraps in there. I have copious Zauber Ball scraps. So perhaps I will cast that on. The news is that tomorrow, if all goes well, we're going early to Huntley Meadows, which is a wetlands, and I hope to get some amazing bird footage, and I may even get some lifer birds there tomorrow because there is a snow goose, at least. Um, I haven't ever seen a Merlin in person, and there's been one spotted, uh, and there are otters there right now, so I'm very excited. To see an otter in the wild is something I've never had the chance to do. So I hope you are enjoying the vlogs and I, like I said yesterday, it's great to have you here. Hey everyone, I've really enjoyed showing you some of the functions of this app, Merlin. I wanna go down to the bottom of the menu and look at explore birds. And perhaps this is something we should have looked at in the beginning, but that's okay. Um, so, I have loaded uh, the date and the time of our trip to North Carolina this uh, past summer. And uh, 
let's take a look. So you're gonna wanna go up to the top right when you get this, and you're gonna wanna um, go to bird packs, and you can, you can either, and you're gonna wanna install some different bird packs, they're free. Um, so I have US Southeast, and then I have the entire can uh, continental US and Canada bird packs. So usually I just use likely birds from my area and I have the location services turned on. Right now I put the location at this one because um, I don't want to share my location with the internet because um, that's never good. All right, so um, for August in Barnardsville, North Carolina, these are the most common birds. And you can see you have a bar graph. It has um, letters for the months of the year and you can see when these birds are most frequently in that area. Um, so a towhee is all year round and it looks a little less robust in January, February, maybe fewer towhees then. Um, it's interesting, that is not the most common bird year-round here. It is definitely the northern cardinal for my area. So, um, you can see the way they collect that data, interestingly, is largely through citizen science and this other app that I use called eBird. Um, I might show you, I'm, I'm much less versed in it, and, but I do submit checklists of um, a couple of places in my area a couple of times a month. And that's how, um, along with sort of professional bird counts, that's how um, these numbers are verified and frequency in times of year for each species. All right, so you can see the check I have next to each bird name. Well, not each bird name, but most of these common ones. See down here, ruby-throated hummingbird. They kind of leave the area in the winter months. Um, what else do we have here? So, so far, the check just means that I have seen all of these birds in person. Let's see. Um, and you know, the interesting thing about this list is that it changes. Uh, of course, it changes based on the time of year. And I really love it here in maybe February, March, when we start getting these amazing songbirds like black and white warblers coming in hooded warblers, indigo buntings, um, black burnian warblers, brown thrashers, a cool one, all the vireos that spend the summer here, phoebes, um, the swallows come back, all the insect catchers. Oh, Canada war. Okay, so look, Canada warbler. Not familiar with that one? Don't have it on my list. Um... Yeah, Scarlet Tanager I've seen, Hermit Thrush I have heard but not seen. I've only seen a Yellow-Billed Cuckoo. I've not seen a Red Crossbill. Hmm. Oven Bird, Turkeys, Chipping Sparrows. Yeah, so there's my favorite song, the Wood Thrush here. Let's listen again. So I'm going to just... So it's uncommon for that time of year in that area population declining, sadly. This song totally echoes through the forests. It's like a bird playing a pan flute. Anyway, um, yeah, so in the, there's oh, so many birds. Um, for that area for that time of year. And I bet it's even greater, a greater number in the spring. So if you click on that top left sort of three bars, you have sort of the master um, menu here. And down there, my life list, see that? I have 160 birds now on my life list. It's like a real life Pokemon hunt. Um, but better, dare I say? I don't know. I've never done Pokemon. I'm going to click on my life list. So these are the birds that I have. I'll tell you where I saw it, the date I saw it, or heard it. I saw a lot of owls, um, or heard a lot of owls this summer. It's 
so that's my life list. Um, there's the roseate spoonbill. Let me see. Do I have the flamingo should be on here. Let's see where it is. Um, maybe at the bottom. Yep. Magpies and flamingos that I saw when I lived in France. Um, those are the only birds that I remember. And of course the flamingos come up from Africa and spend some time in the salt marshes along the Mediterranean. So that's Merlin. That's about all I got for you. I think that's a lot and I hope you've enjoyed it. I will do a brief, um, a brief tutorial on eBird, which really can pair with Merlin and is that really citizen science aspect of, um, of how we get all of these bird counts per area, per time frame. And um, my, my life list, this app is connected with my eBird, which is how it knows my life list. Um, yeah. All right. See you soon. Yeah, it's right there. Thank you.